wow, this has been a journey. I've not had one, not two, but three Goal Zero Yeti 500s in this endeavor to show you the charging capabilities of the Goal Zero Yeti 500X along with a solar panel array and maybe getting it all the way up to that 180 watt charge capability. All right, so without too much waiting around, let's go ahead and get straight into it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the brand new unit that I was just sent. All right, here it is from the top. A little bit of a challenge getting it out of here, so. All right, so there you go. That's my unit. It does look like my unit may have already been opened, but let's go ahead and get you a 360 of that. guy up. All right, so it says here, go ahead and keep that box. There's the user's manual. We've got some foam protection. We've got the charging cable supply. So one of them's the plug adapter to the wall. The other one is the power brick to supply 60 watts charging capabilities. Set those to the side. And here is the main unit. So let's go ahead and open this up, get this out of here. And you do want to hang on to the box, because the box allows you to ship it back to goal zero if you're inside the mainland of the United States, which I am not, therefore I have all these issues. But there you go. There's the Goal Zero Yeti 500X unboxed. And since I've already done an unboxing video of that, I'm just gonna do a quick circling around. I haven't yet seen this unit. Uh, so it looks like we have pretty much a fresh face on this guy, that rear charging. And let's go ahead and power this unit on. So I'll get the light on. And right now it says it's at a 48% charge, which is great uh, because what I'm gonna do is I've got my solar panels set up outside and I've got some cabling run here. It's 120 watts, it is 1320, so 120 PM. And I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this straight in to the solar charger. We should get a blinking light here. And there we go. We've got some charging and you can see the MPPT trying to work at it. And I am now at 60, 65, 65 watts charging. All right, and this is coming straight through a 120 panel solar array. So three, pardon, four goal zero Boulder 40s older 30s and that unit is hooked up in parallel and sent via a 30 foot extension cable and additionally another 15 foot so I know I'm getting some loss of power probably some major loss of power I'm probably only receiving like 60% of everything uh, but wanted to show you what it looks like when it's taking a charge and right now I'm showing 70 watts of input um, and one of the things I did notice, even though I was only able to charge it for one day on each of the past units, is once it went beyond the first five or 10 watts, it would then show you increments of charging of five watts at a time. And it would just jump up and down by that five watts. So I don't know if that's just what it's showing versus what it's actually producing. Uh, but compared to my Sherpa 100 AC, which I'm also going to utilize with this right now. And I'm gonna show you charging USB-C at the same time. 
So I've actually been supplement charging my other two units that I had through the USB Type-C charger port. Uh, but this, I'm going to go ahead and power this guy on. I'm at 100% charge on this unit. And I am going to, through the Type-C charger, I'm going to go ahead and plug that additionally up to this unit. And we should have a higher input charge. Now, one of the things that you've got to do when you do this is you've got to um, power on the USB first, then you plug this in and it'll actually begin to take that charge. And here we go. So we are starting to jump up on that. On the Sherpa 100 AC, I'm currently at an output of 55 watts, it says. And right now on this unit, I'm at a total of 125 watts of input charge coming from solar and then coming from an external source. Um, and I have used this for pass-through charging in the past. And I'll go ahead and hook up my Nomads to this and do pass-through charging through to here. Uh, but still, it's just going to be sending the battery power for a regulated charge through to the Goal Zero Yeti 500. But that shows you the input capabilities of this unit. And it's supposed to go all the way up to 180 watts. So obviously I'm losing something here because this is charging at pretty much a continuous 55 watts. And my sunlight outside is, is nearly at full power. So this thing is jumping all around. So let me go ahead and take this off and let's see what happens. And it's showing 20 watts of input right now. Which I do have some shading going on outside. All right, and then the sun looks like it's coming out right now. So we're jumping back up. So 65, 75 watts. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this in again. So 70 watts. The sun's maintaining right now outside, so not too much of a change. 125 watts at the beginning here. And one of the things you'll notice is you've got a blue blinking light when it is taking a charge. My defective units, after that second day, this blue light would come on showing that there is power coming through the cable assembly. However, it would not begin to blink and therefore it would not take an input charge. And this can be done both through the front charge port. And you're going to notice the blue blinking light regardless for my Sherpa 100 AC providing power to it. But additionally, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the back of the unit. We should see that jump up of power intake. And there we go. Jumping up 97, 98, 100 watts of power input. So this is what this video is going to show is the input charge capabilities of the Yeti 500X, whether it be through the front of the unit or the back. In this case, I'm right now charging through the back of the unit. and the ability to take a simultaneous charge, which you can only charge through one of the eight millimeter ports at a time. So if you have two plugged in simultaneously, it'll only revert to that front charger as the primary A charging input, and then this becomes secondary. Uh, so if you don't want it to decide which of the two chargers to take input from, you're gonna wanna go ahead and choose that, that front assembly or that rear assembly with one cable. Otherwise, if you've got two cables, both with a power source, it will revert to that front charging source. I don't think it matters how much power is coming through it, um, but there you go. That's the charging capabilities of the Yeti 500X. I will go ahead and show a, a video snapshot of the solar panel array that's taking this input from the sun and sending that through to this goal zero. Um, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully it's helpful and 
Um, as we've been charging here, the fans for this unit have not come on, but I haven't been charging it for very long. And it's also not anywhere near the maximum charge input capability of this unit, which to my understanding is 180 watts. All right. Hope you like it. Like, share, subscribe. Until next time. Peace.